What is going on guys? D1 here and welcome to my movement rotation interpolation tutorial or whatever I end up calling it. The idea of this tutorial is when you have a moving character like this guy, he moves left and right, the movement looks a little bit boring. You know, it's a very static cylinder moving left and right. Uh, there's no sense of m momentum or or motion essentially. He's moving but he at the same time he feels very static and dead kind of. So the idea here is to add a bit of an effect to make it look better, make it look a bit more dynamic and this is what it looks like without the effect and I'm just gonna go here and just connect a node. Oh. Uh oh. Spoiler alert. And I'm gonna minimize this play and you can see here you have this very smooth rotation effect and this effect that you see here has a lot of different applications this isn't the only way you can use it so I think it's overall very useful to learn and if you like what you see and you wanna know how to apply this just keep watching the video and you're gonna get that information alright so here I have a basic setup a new project with no starter content and the only things I have are a level that I've saved a main game blue, uh, main game mode which tells the level that I'm going to be using player BP as my character and the player BP itself which the only logic it has is the input and the movement so all this character does is move left and right that's it and that's what we're going to be working with very basic uh, I would assume that you're familiar with the basics of blueprint so you can set up your own movement it takes two minutes so let's get started on the interpolation just to, for clarification, in the viewport, the only things I have are a cylinder, just so we can see our character, spring arm and camera. Those are the only things I've added. Okay, so let's get to the event graph. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be constantly monitoring the player's movement on the x-axis. If we go to the game here, and I just throw him in, you can see that when he's moving left and right, he's moving on the x-axis. So that's the axis that we're going to be worrying about. Uh, and how are we going to be checking it constantly? By using event tick. Now you can see there are three things that are going to be transparent. Uh, this one isn't because I've used it a little bit, but event begin play. This fires only when you start your game, and then that's it. It doesn't go again. Event tick is constant, and that's what we want. We want to constantly check the player's velocity on the x-axis. So let's extend this little pin here, and I'm going to be typing in sequence. Actually, we're not going to be needing a sequence in this case. I'm just going to be extending this, and it's a good habit to use sequence, I think. So let's do it anyway. And what this does is it allows you to check, multi to run multiple, uh, to execute multiple nodes from the event tick. That's what sequence does. Uh, we're not going to be using multiple nodes, but I just thought it would be useful to have that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to be checking the player's velocity on the x-axis and usually when you want to check something branch is the way to go and what it does is it checks a boolean a condition of true or false uh, to see which way it's gonna fire alright so what we're checking is the player's velocity so the first thing we need to get is his velocity get velocity the next thing we're, we're only checking velocity on the x-axis so let's break it down uh, and now what we want to do is get the x-axis, check if it's greater than zero. And we're going to connect that, connect that to the branch. So the condition for this branch is, is the player moving on the x-axis in the positive x direction? So if it's greater than zero. And if that's true, we're going to set his rotation to a certain value, set actor rotation. Now, what is that value going to be? We can just check over here. I'm going to drag him in, pull him up a little bit, and I'm going to hit E for rotation. And if he's moving, you notice here that this is the x-axis. If he's moving on the positive x-axis, so he's moving in this direction, we want him to tilt a little bit towards that direction. And right here in rotation, we can see that it's negative 19, so almost 20. We'll say negative 20 is the number we're going to go with on the y-axis though, that's where he's going to be rotating. Okay, so now that we figured out our number, uh, just to prevent issues forward 
going forward, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to be changing the rotation on the y-axis. If we go with this right now, and we play, you notice that he doesn't actually tilt. And the reason he doesn't tilt is because I don't have any values. So let's add negative 20 to the y slot. And now let's test it out. OK, so now that I move, you can see that he tilts. Very extreme. He moves the camera with him as well. We're going to fix that. But the problem right now is, well, not a problem, but the situation is that I only want to be affecting the y axis for rotation. So if your character is going to be moving forward and back as well, he's not going to be setting their rotations to zero. So there's not going to be any conflicts in the future if we do it this way. Get actor rotation, break, and then we're going to make rotator. And again, we only want to affect the Y rotation. So we can connect X to X, connect Z to Z, and here we can set our value to negative 20 again. What this does, negative 20, not negative 200, and what this does is it gets the actor's rotation and it uses whatever values he already has assigned for X and Z. Uh, and then it allows us to choose what the Y is going to be. And that's what we want. We only want to affect the Y rotation. So that's good. So now just to give you a quick rundown. Event tick, so many times over a second, the game is going to be checking whether the player is moving on the uh, whether the player's movement on x is greater than zero if it is if it's true then we're going to set his rotation only on the y axis to 20. the rest of the axes are just going to stay the same uh, they're going to be unaffected by this so let's give this a quick test it should look the same as before and you notice that he tilts but he doesn't reset and the camera tilts with him so let's fix the camera thing because it's a little bit annoying. I'm going to go to viewport, select spring arm, and if I scroll down you can see under camera settings there's inherit pitch yaw roll. We're going to uncheck those. And what that does is it stops the spring arm from copying the player's rotation. So now when I play, he tilts but the camera doesn't tilt with it. So that's good. Now the other thing we want to do is we want him to stand straight once we stop tilting. But we're going to do that later. We're going to skip that for now. The next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to check if he's moving on. So now we're checking if he's moving on the positive x-axis. Now we want to check if he's moving on the negative x-axis. So if he's not moving on the positive axis, we can pass it through false and create another branch. And we're going to create the same setup we had here. Get velocity because we want to check his velocity on the x-axis and to get the velocity on the x-axis specifically we have to break it down and this time instead of greater we're gonna check if the x-axis is less than zero and we're gonna connect that and again we're gonna set actor rotation and before the value we had was negative 20 this time it's gonna be positive 20 but remember we only want to affect the y-axis we don't want to set these guys we don't want to force them to be zero while this is uh, taking effect so we're gonna get actor rotation we're gonna break the rotation down break rotator and we're gonna make rotator now you remember in our little field test I guess where we had the player here when we rotate we're gonna be rotating in this direction this time you can see that the rotation happens on the y-axis so nothing new there just the usual information we had connect x to x connect z to z and then we can control what y is going to be, which in this case is going to be positive 20, the opposite of what we had over here. And we're going to compile and save and see what that looks like. So we move left, he tilts. We move right, he tilts in the opposite direction. He still doesn't reset, though. So here's how we're going to fix that. If he's not moving on the positive x-axis, so that's false, and he's not moving on the negative x-axis, so that's false as well. He's probably not moving on the x-axis at all, right? But just in case, just to avoid complications later on, we're going to get 
velocity, and we're going to check whether his velocity on the x-axis is zero. So we're going to break it down again. And on x, we're going to check if x equals zero. And if that is true, then we're going to set actor rotation to be zero, zero, zero. But remember, we only want to be affecting the y-axis. So get actor rotation, break rotator, make rotator, connect x to x, connect z to z, and then we're going to connect the sort of purplish blue rotation value to the rotation value that's going to be fed into the set actor rotation. And this time we're going to set pitch to zero. So just to summarize what we did, many times in a second we're checking if the player is moving on the positive x-axis, and if that's true, then we're going to set his rotation to negative 20. So he's going to tilt a certain way. If he's not moving on the positive x-axis, which means this value is going to be false, we're going to be moving over here where we check whether he's moving on the, if his movement is on the negative x-axis. So it's less than zero. And if that's true, then we're going to set his rotation to the opposite of what the first one was going to be. This one was uh, negative 20 the next one is going to be 20. And if he's not moving on the positive x-axis, and he's not moving on the negative x-axis, so both conditions are false, then we're going to check if his movement on the x-axis is zero. If it is, then set his rotation to zero, which resets him to the original position. Let's see what that looks like. Left, right, and you notice when I stop, he goes back to his original rotation. All right, so now we have our basic rotation set up. Uh, the next thing is to go through with the interpolation so that it's a smooth rotation. So how are we going to do that? Well, there are different kinds of interpolation in Unreal Engine that interpolate different types of variables. So if you type in interp, you can see there's f interp, c interp, r interp, v interp, a lot of interps. What we want to do is rotation. R interp 2. There's constant, which you can use, but I prefer uh, the non-constant one because it's kind of on a, it speeds up and slows down to create the smooth effect as opposed to rotating at a constant pace, which looks kind of mechanical. So now we have this big, big uh, node that shows up and it takes a bunch of values. So we're going to fill those values in and it's actually very simple. So with interpolation, it's going to be going from one point to another. This is going to be point A, the starting point. You can see it's labeled as current. And this is going to be the target rotation, so what we want him to actually be. Now, here, our target rotation is already negative 20. We know that. And the current rotation, well, that can just be the, the player's current rotation. So that's already solved for us. The value's there. Mm, throat went a little dry. So the current rotation is, we can just plug it in from get actor rotation. So the first value is very simple. Now the target rotation, we already have it over here. So instead of having it here, we're going to plug it into our interpolation box. And the final value is going to be what our interpolation box determines. So when I plug it in, you notice it gets rid of the connection here. So the only modification we've done is instead of going from the get act, instead of going to negative 20 immediately, what it's going to do is it's going to ease the value between the current rotation and the negative 20 through this box. And that easing effect is going to be activating the whole time over here. So you're going to visibly see it ease into that rotation. Now the other two variables are delta time, another variable we can just get from somewhere. So you notice that event tick has this little green thing at the bottom called delta seconds. We can just drag it in. Alternatively, to have a, instead of having a bunch of green lines going all over, what we can do is promote it to a variable. And we're just going to activate it with this node. So instead of having a line that goes from here to here, we can just use the variable we have, get. Because this delta second is being fed into new var, new variable zero. So we can just drag in new variable zero and plug it in. So that's solved. Next is interp speed. The bigger the number, the faster the interpolation. If you make it a very large number, it's going to be pretty much instant. So there's no point in having all of this if you want to add a very large interpolation speed.
So we're going to go with something a little bit smooth like 5. And we're going to compile and save. Just to recap, what we did is we already had these nodes, the, which set the rotation to negative 20. We added this guy who's going to be translating the, who's going to be interpolating the rotation between the actor's current rotation, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is, into what we want it to be, which is whatever the x is already and whatever the z is already, with y specifically set to negative 20. And then it asks for delta seconds, so we give it delta seconds. It doesn't matter what delta seconds is. And then the interp speed is how fast we want it to go, which in this case I set it to 5. Let's see what that does. You notice when I go left, it's very smooth. When I go right, it's sudden. So we're just going to have to apply this to left. The other thing is you notice when I stop moving from left, he suddenly goes back to default position. So we're going to be adding interpolation to the other two parts of this sort of logic sequence. And what we can do is we can just copy the uh, values over here. The, sorry, the nodes over here, new var 0 and r interp, because nothing is going to change as far as those two things go, and we're going to paste them over here. Now, these are the rotation values for the second node in the sequence. This was the first one. It's a little bit messy, but, you know, if you make it, then it's a little bit easier to understand. And I'm going to move it back a little bit. So this is the second set actor rotation which checks if the player is moving on the negative x-axis. And again, for the current rotation, we're going to use get actor rotation, and we're just going to plug it in. Now, just to point out, get actor rotation is still going to be plugged into break rotator, so it's connecting to two things. And we have break actor rotation make rotator, which is going to be, which is going to be setting our target rotation, and we're going to plug that into the target for our interp. Delta time is already there because we copied and pasted it with this box. And interp speed is 5, which is the same as what we had here because it was a copy-paste. And the last thing we're going to do is connect return value to new rotation. And that's going to remove the link from this node to this node and replace it with these two guys, which is exactly what we want. So now to test that out, move left, smooth, move right, smooth. The reset is still a bit rough. So we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to apply interpolation to the reset. Again, I'm going to grab the interp2, the r interp2, and the new var. Control c Control v and here's the next set actor rotation. So I'm going to grab these three, the rotation nodes, pull them back a little bit, grab these two guys, which we just pasted, and again, what is the current rotation? Well, it's the from the get actor current rotation. What is the target rotation? It's what we have over here, so we're just going to connect it here instead of having it over here. And then, and how I break links, by the way, is I press Alt and then click the link, and that breaks it. And then we're going to connect the R interp return value to new rotation. And again, the interp speed is already 5, delta seconds is already there, and now what we have is a very smooth rotation system. Now, when he goes idle, it's the same as the other two, but I feel as though it's a little bit too slow. And that's going to be awkward on a character once you have an animated, <coughs> once you have an animated character there. So let's just speed it up a bit. Let's say we're going to make it 8. Much better. So there you go, interpolation. I think it adds a bit of a... A sense of momentum to movement, especially once you incorporate it in jumping as well, it looks very nice. Uh, you can replicate this effect with animations, but I prefer to do. I prefer it this way because it's it's more. Uh, it's easier to apply than animations, and it's easier to adjust as far as values go. So there you have it. The player rotates smoothly. I hope you guys enjoyed and found this tutorial useful. I hope I'm not going too fast. If I was. Please let me know in the comments, and if you have any questions, also let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.